Hey team, I'm Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up. And today we're gonna talk about beta radiation. So either he was just trying to be clever and say electronic but backwards, or Isaac Asimov's science fiction robots moved back through time like Merlin in The Once and Future King. Okay, so if you have been watching my channel for a bit, then uh, you've seen uh, why Bruce Banner would have just died, which is when we talked about gamma radiation and how it affects humans. And we talked about why you shouldn't lick science, especially if it emits alpha radiation. Um, and so now we're gonna talk about beta radiation, which is, um, that kind of rounds out the big three types of radiation. We'll probably talk about neutron radiation at some point, um, but these are the main three. Um, and beta radiation is actually kind of special because it comes in two flavors, beta plus and beta minus. And like we discussed in those previous videos, um, the names for these things uh, come from the very early 1900s, um, over 100 years ago now. Um, and so now that we know what those particles are, um, like an alpha particle is the nucleus of a helium atom, um, we still use the old names. So a, a beta minus particle is an electron and a beta plus particle is a positron. What is a positron, you ask? Excellent question. A positron is the um, antimatter particle of an electron. So what that means is that it has every single property of an electron. Um, they're like the same in every way except they have opposite charge. Okay, so how do we get uh, beta plus and beta minus particles? Great question. Um, that's gonna be through um, either beta plus or beta minus decay. This is a type of spontaneous nuclear reaction. Um, and I'm just gonna give uh, two examples. Um, so carbon 14, um, so this is a nuclear science way of writing isotopes out. So six is the number of protons, C for carbon, 14 the total number of protons plus neutrons. Um, so carbon 14 will beta minus decay into um, nitrogen 14. So carbon 14 becomes uh, seven nitrogen, uh, sorry, yeah, seven nitrogen 14, um, and then it's going to emit an electron, which has a negative charge. It also um, produces a, um, uh, sorry, it's going to also produce an antineutrino. Um, so I'm just going to draw that for my own sake. Um, but this is the guy we're concerned with. So now we have an electron running around ready to do stuff. And like we've talked about in previous videos about radiation, all radiation is is streams of particles that uh, interact um, with uh, different materials in different ways. And what we're concerned about is how these would interact with say human beings. For beta plus decay, we're going to use the example of carbon 10 um, and carbon 10 will beta plus decay into boron. Um, so it will become five boron 10 um, plus a positron. So our beta plus particle um, and it'll also make a regular neutrino. So that would be one way of how we get our um, positrons. This is just two examples of how we get our beta minus and beta plus particles that are also called electrons and positrons. Um, so my joke for the opening was Isaac Asimov's positronic brain. Um, Isaac Asimov, in addition to being a physicist, was also um, a science fiction writer. And in some of his books, he would have, now this is in like, the 60s when science fiction was the best and effectively magic, especially if you threw the word radiation in there. Um, and he, 
um, in his world, he would have ro his robots. The robot brains were positronic brains. Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know what he meant by that. Uh, but that's, uh, yeah, so that's other than it's like powered by the flow of positrons instead of the flow of electrons. And so their electric brains would be the flow of electrons. I don't know. Um, but, okay, neither here nor there, little sidetracked. Um, okay, so let's imagine we have our beta particle, which I'm just going to draw as a beta there, uh, Greek letter beta, and it is flying through space. Um, and for, for these purposes, it doesn't really matter if it's positive or negatively charged, um, because if we have this guy running around flying past atoms with their orbiting electrons, um, it's going to interact with them through the electromagnetic force, right? Um, and so a, say, a beta minus particle would interact with this electron by trying to push it away. So if this came by this way, the electron would go like that way. Um, uh, electromagnetic force works like, like magnets. You can't put a North Pole and a North Pole together, right? They try to push each other away. Like charges try to push each other away. Um, if instead my beta particle here was positively charged, um, then it would attract the electron to it. But either way, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the alpha particle flying by, which is we're going to strip electrons away from nucleuses of atoms as we go by. This creates ions, right? So if we get rid of that electron, now this atom has a net positive charge, and it's going to go seek um, that missing electron by forming a bond with some other um, unsuspecting neighboring atom. So here's another atom. And again, when this happens inside living tissue, what we have is chemistry happening where we don't expect or want chemistry to happen. So the mechanism there um, by which the beta radiation causes biological damage is the same as it was for alpha radiation. Um, now, when we talked about alpha radiation, I said that, well, the good thing about alpha radiation is that alpha, alpha particles are fat and slow, so they can't travel very far. But when they interact with living tissue, they do a lot, a lot, a lot of damage in a very small space. Um, so beta particles, on the other hand, they're much, 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 much smaller than an alpha particle, um, which means that they're harder to shield for so they can travel further. So a beta particle can go further than an alpha particle, but it actually can't do as much damage because since it's gonna travel a longer distance, the damage that it does, the atoms that it disrupts and the chemistry, unwanted chemistry it causes is done, um, is more spread out. And that gives the body um, more of a chance to heal itself and recover. Uh, so with radiation and with shielding, it's this balance between how easy is it to shield the particle um, versus how much damage can it possibly do. And so beta radiation actually really falls into this weird middle ground um, where it's still pretty easy to shield against. Um, a layer of clothing will protect you from beta radiation. Remember with alpha radiation, just having skin protects you from alpha radiation. So you're only gonna be harmed by alpha radiation if the alpha particle comes in contact with living tissue, specifically like if you were to eat an alpha emitter. With a beta particle, um, I would not recommend eating a beta emitter either, um, but uh, a layer of clothing will protect your body from beta radiation. So it's still pretty darn easy to shield for. Um, and it won't, if you do happen to ingest like a beta emitter, um, it won't do as much biological damage as the alpha radiation. Um, 
so yeah that is beta radiation in a nutshell if you haven't checked out my videos on um, alpha radiation or gamma radiation um, those should be popping up around now i hope you liked this video um, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that red subscribe button. I would really like to break 500 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, and I think it's going to be a hard push to get there. And I would really appreciate your help. Um, so you guys are cool. Um, I hope you're doing well and I will talk to you soon. Okay.